you know, I think we all know that Frank Turek really isn't that bright. He's preaching for the lowest common denominator, and his answers, they're very rarely deep or introspective. But when he ignores some of the most basic and important philosophical concepts out there, by clearly showing that he doesn't comprehend the idea, can any of us really say that we're surprised? I can't, because I think Frank is really pretty dumb. Let's be honest, most of the questions that we see Frank Turek answer on his videos, they tend to be softballs, lobbed to him by people who either don't understand the big concepts, or who really aren't that interested in an in-depth conversation. He is clearly not a very deep thinker, and philosophically, he's really kind of a child. Nowhere is that more true than today, when a member of the audience throws him what could be a difficult question, and Frank, well, Frank tries to pass it all off as a joke. So let's go see him fail once again. How can you prove you exist? Well, you can't. Not in any objectively certain way. This is something that drives a lot of people a little bonkers. The fact that reality, even your own reality, isn't absolutely certain. It's the basis for some forms of solipsism and other irrational belief systems, often including religion. The simple reality is, there are some things that we simply have to assume to have any basis for beginning a discussion. If you aren't real in some fashion, then how can you be part of the debate? It's not necessarily a satisfying idea, but it is one that we just have to deal with nonetheless. So let's see where Frank is going to take it. Here I am. And immediately he goes down a stupid path. Now, I know that Frank isn't a particularly intelligent or philosophical thinker, but that was sad even for him. Okay, yes, I know it was intended as a joke, and he's obviously going to have to expand on it going forward, but yeah, that was kind of a sad start, Frank. It's why I'm not really impressed with much he ever has to say. He's not really that thoughtful or rational. He believes what is emotionally comforting, and the second anyone asks him a difficult question, he doesn't seem to have the intellectual background to handle it well. I don't predict this is going to go very well for him. <laughs> well, I, I would have to exist in order to prove anything, right? If you, how can I prove I exist? First of all, I have to exist to make any sort of mental calculation or mental uh, assertion. So this is the old Descartes, uh, uh, Descartes dictum where he said, I doubt, therefore I am. Actually, Rene Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. How can you get that wrong, Frank? It's one of the most common philosophical topics out there. And whether people like it or not, Descartes was simply wrong. The question then becomes, well, how do you know that you're thinking? How do you know that the things in your supposed head aren't just being projected there by someone or something else? How do you know that you're not part of some giant, incredibly complex dream? How do you know that you're not a meat robot programmed by some outside intelligence with an algorithm so complex that you can't tell it isn't your own thoughts? Not only is Frank being dumb, he doesn't know why he's being dumb. And obviously, he's trying to use the question to set up his own apologetics. Dumb, ignorant, and clumsy. That's Frank Turek. Right? Well, he would have to, he would have to, I am before he doubted. 
<laughs> right? He's kind of had the, he kind of got the, the cart before the horse, if you will. In the South, we say, I'm is. Huh? No. Not funny, Frank. You've got one person in the audience with a polite chuckle. But this is because Frank really doesn't have an answer. He doesn't recognize the depth of the problem. He's just trying to get back on familiar ground without realizing that he's entirely left the reservation. Nay, he's left the entire planet. So, pretty typical Frank, in other words. So, you have to exist. It's, it, it, it reminds me of a student who once said, I don't exist, and the instructor said, who just said that? Unknown. And as I said, we have to make some base assumptions in order to even have a conversation. So, whether or not you can prove that you exist in any objectively verifiable way, you still have to assume that you exist in order to answer the question. This just gets Frank into trouble because he uses the same idea to argue that his imaginary friend is real. God must exist because if God doesn't exist, nothing else could exist, at least according to the fanatics. Yet that has not been established. It's just a bald assertion, not an objectively demonstrable fact. They want it to be true without being able to prove that it is. This is why assumptions only work if you understand the point of the assumption in the first place. And Frank clearly does not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right? In order to say that, you'd have to exist. That's true. Right? Good. Not really. I mean, you could theoretically program your computer to say that it exists. Now, we understand that the computer, the physical box that contains the microprocessors and the memory and all of that, that exists, at least in our paradigm, but that doesn't mean that the intelligence that presumably says, I exist, actually exists. Frank, the meat sack, is real, again, for the sake of our argument, but that doesn't mean that the intelligence that thinks it's Frank Turek actually does. That part simply isn't demonstrable. If your programming of the computer was so complex, so perfect, that the computer actually thought it was thinking, how could it tell the difference? That's a question that Frank simply isn't equipped to deal with. See, this is exactly why I think Frank is such a terrible thinker. Now, if he had gone into his typical apologetic nonsense, he could have taken that claim that if he didn't exist, he couldn't answer, and just applied it to God. We've seen it happen before. God must exist because Frank wants God to exist. Therefore, nothing could happen without God existing. Lather, rinse, repeat. But that's not the same kind of necessary assumption that we make when we assume our own existence for the sake of being able to discuss the subject. God is not demonstrable by any means. God isn't part of the conversation in any objectively verifiable way. It makes any assumptions that anyone makes about God pointless. It's why skeptics are not convinced by the nonsense that theists spew. We are not emotionally attached to the idea that God just has to be there. Theists are. Just like a lot of people are emotionally attached to the idea that they have to exist, therefore, even questioning the concept seems entirely insane. Of course they exist. Of course God is real. It's a fundamental part of their very concept of reality. It's just not defensible. It's based on feelings, not facts. It's really why people like Frank Turek fail so often. Because... They just aren't smart enough to go and look at the big questions without all of the emotional baggage that they drag around compromising their rationality. But his audience doesn't seem that smart either, so I guess he's just catering to his meal ticket. It's just so frank. <laughs> Dick it, bum, 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 d